Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And we're continuing with our discovery unit in today's program. Remember, last time we started talking about Girl Meets Farm. Season two. This、uh, program, of course, is on TLC.、Yeah. In our discovery unit, of course, we're talking about Molly. Yeah,、uh, she's a cookbook author. She's a chef. She's a food blogger. She's also a very talented musician. She might even, you know, do a drum solo during the show. Who knows? <laughs> I kind of doubt、mm. it. But, but in any case, I suppose drumming and、uh, you know rhythms and stuff might、uh, help out your cooking skills.、Oh, I don't know. You never know. It might be useful there. But in any case, last time, of course, we introduced you to Molly Ye.、Uh, she has a multicultural background.、Mm. She has、uh, Chinese and Jewish blood, and she grew up in the USA. So she has all sorts of ideas for coming up with unique dishes. Uh, that you might enjoy, or that you might try cooking as well. You could probably get the recipes pretty easily online. Yeah, she has a really interesting mix. Her background's really cool. So if you look her up, I had to look her up online to see if I had ever seen her before. She doesn't look familiar. She's quite young. She's only thirty,、um, and she looks very sweet. So we're going to continue talking about、uh, her show. Girl Meets Farm season two, but this time we're in a different episode. As you know, TV shows have a new episode every time it views. So, like every week, there's a new episode.、Um, and this time, she's going to be inviting some friends over for dinner, and she's trying to impress them. Heck, if she's a chef, it would be very easy for her to impress people. I think. I love folks who love to cook and then invite me over to eat it. Uh, cooking's, uh, you know, it's okay, but、uh, yeah, some people really enjoy it. I've wanted to get into cooking more at home, but there's just me, and it's not very fun for one person. So I make enough and then bring some extras, maybe to people at church or friends at work. That's more fun if you can share it. We're going to talk about that and what she decides to make. Sounds really delicious again, so it's making me hungry. But we are going to read through today's、uh, lesson first. In another episode, Molly invites her friends over for dinner and pulls out all the stops to impress them. For the main course, she makes some rhubarb short ribs. The ribs have a complex taste that's bursting with flavor. However, The dish is so easy to make that even a novice cook couldn't mess it up. Molly pairs the ribs with another one of her specialties, crispy saffron rice. When the dish is prepared correctly, the floral notes of the saffron and buttery flavor of the rice are a perfect match. In her preparation, Molly only uses an eighth of a teaspoon of saffron. That's because the spice is extremely powerful. And she doesn't want to overpower the other ingredients. In addition, Molly always uses clarified butter for this dish because of its high burning point and strong flavor. For dessert, Molly whips up a cheesecake with a pistachio crust. It's light, fluffy, and not too sweet. The secret to this dish is roasting the pistachios first, as this brings out the nuts' flavor. After a few hours in the kitchen. Molly is pleased with the results. Shortly afterward, her friends arrive and are blown away by Molly's meal. The ribs are a big hit with everyone. They're as sweet as candy, and the meat is so tender that it slides off the bone. As they're enjoying the meal, the women notice someone sneaking around the house. It's Molly's husband Nick, hoping that they will offer him some food. To find out if he joins them for this delicious meal, watch Girl Meets Farm season two this July on TLC. Okay, guys, we're going to be talking about Molly Yez's show, Girl Meets Farm, but this time we're in a new episode. As you know, the last、uh, reel we did, or the last program we did, was about Thanksgiving dinner that she prepared all the dishes. It sound like. Kind of hard. There's a lot of food for Thanksgiving. I hope some of her friends brought things too. But in this episode, she's inviting some friends over for dinner, and she's pulling out all the stops. 
to pull out all the stops means you do whatever it takes to be successful or to impress people. It actually comes originally from a musical expression. If you know about the organ, not the piano, but the organ, you know there are stops on the organ that can change the sound and the tone of that、uh, organ produces as you play it, and. If you have a great organ, it can be very impressive to pull out all the stops. So that's kind of where it originates. Probably doesn't make sense to you if you don't、uh, know anything about the organ. But take a, a quick look online. Check out an organ that has a lot of stops, and you'll see what I mean. But if you want to really impress people, you need to do whatever you can. You don't.、Uh, you don't do anything simple. You want to. Do things that are kind of hard because you're trying to get people's reaction. If you impress someone, whatever you're doing makes them admire you, or they're really thinking, "Wow, they're good at that. They're awesome." There are different ways to impress people. Of course, if you're in a class and you're a student, if you want to impress your teacher, you always turn your homework in on time. You try to get the best grade you can. You're a really attentive student. Those are ways that you can impress a teacher. Right, or boys try to impress girls, of course, by buying <laughs> fast, expensive cars and stuff like that.、Uh, that might actually impress them, indeed. But、uh, here she wants to impress her guests, rather.、Uh, of course, this is a TV show, so she's got to produce some really wonderful food here.、Mm. So here's、uh, what she's doing for the meal here. For the main course, she makes some rhubarb short ribs. Ribs, of course, are the bones from the cow, right? Okay, or pig, At, or pig. And、yeah. then the meat on those ribs, of course, and short ribs. I guess that's a special kind of rib that's close to the center bone or something like、mm. that. I'm mostly vegetarian myself, so I probably wouldn't eat this thing myself. I might, you know, if somebody made it, and it would be kind of、uh, rude if I turned it down. Right. Rhubarb, of course, is a, a kind of plant.、Uh, it looks kind of like celery, but it can be red in American、color. celery, though, not the Taiwanese celery, which is thin. It's、mm. that. It's like the American that's really. You know, hard and crispy and thick, yeah. yeah. And、uh, I think it's da huang、mm. in Chinese. I don't know if you have rhubarb here in Taiwan. I've never seen it in a market. Yeah, the neighbors、uh, in my hometown where I grew up had a rhubarb bush in the backyard. Oh, and we used to go back there and pick the stalks and eat them ourselves. Even though we didn't really like it, we just did it because we could. <laughs> even though we didn't really like the rhubarb,、uh, I think my grandmother made rhubarb pies as well.、Mm -hmm. But in any case, this might. Might actually be a rather tasty dish here. So the ribs have a complex taste that's bursting with flavor. So if、uh, something is complex, it's got all sorts of things involved in it. So if you taste it,、uh, there's going to be all sorts of different kinds of flavors there, which is probably good if you like that sort of thing.、Uh, complex is similar in meaning to complicated,、mm -hmm. but complicated tends to describe some kind of problem that needs needs to be solved. Well, we've got a problem here, but it's very complicated. It's going to take several weeks for us to solve it. But here, complex just means there's a lot of things involved, and it can be a good thing. It can be really tasty if you've got a lot of different、uh, flavor spices, maybe different ingredients that she puts into her rhubarb short ribs. That's weird. I've never heard of rhubarb short ribs, and I can't imagine what they must taste like. So it's got a complex taste or a complex taste. It's bursting with flavor. If you're bursting with something, there's so much of it. It's like wow. It's almost too much flavor sometimes. Sometimes kids will come home from school and they're bursting with excitement because something great has happened, and they want to tell mom or dad about it.、Um, you can be bursting with lots of different kinds of emotions.、Um, hopefully, you're bursting with happiness or good emotions, and not bad. But this has got a really big flavor. I love short ribs.、Um, If she's making sort of a barbecue rhubarb barbecue sort of flavor, I'd be curious to taste it. So, it says here, however, the dish is so easy to make that even a novice cook couldn't mess it up. If you're a novice at anything, you're a beginner. So, if you see that word, it just means someone who's、uh, got very little experience is just starting out with something.、Um, 
Yeah, I'm probably a novice baker. Yeah, I've baked before, but I'm not that good. I need to take more classes or maybe practice more at home. And if you mess something up, you ruin it.、Uh, some people, it's very easy for them to mess up food in the kitchen. I have a brother that can't even, you know, make scrambled eggs. He's terrible. My dad's not very good either. But the few dishes he makes, he can, you know, he's pretty good at them by now. But、uh, yeah. Yeah, if you want to become good at something or eventually become an expert, you have to practice, practice, practice. Indeed. So, in this particular case, though, the dish is very easy to make, and because it's so easy, even a beginner, even a novice,、yeah. couldn't screw it up. They couldn't <laughs> mess it up. They could still produce something tasty. Now, Molly pairs the ribs with another one of her specialties. Crispy saffron rice. So here, pair is being used as a verb to pair something with something.、Mm. That just means to put them together.、Uh, so they're a pair here, or they're a team, basically. So she serves this with something else. It's another of her specialties. A specialty, of course, is something that you're really good at that most people aren't. So this is her specialty. This is what she's good at. Crispy saffron rice. If something's crispy, it's kind of crunchy. Uh, sometimes you can eat、uh, crispy things like、uh, potato crisps or potato chips, as we call them in America. They are crispy. They make noise when you chew on them.、Mm, I love crispy things. Tui tui da is what I say when I want to go get、uh, guotie. <laughs> I want the crispiest ones they have. Saffron is quite expensive to buy, and it's also very strong. So you don't need very much of it. You'll see a lot of saffron in. Dishes from India. So she's making saffron rice. It's crispy because it's cooked in the bottom of a pan, typically. So it's a lot crispier than the soft,、uh, sticky rice we have in Taiwan, which I also love quite a bit. When the dish is prepared correctly. There are floral notes of the saffron and buttery flavor of the rice that are a perfect match. Floral refers to flowers, and it's an adjective. So, some foods or flavors or even spices, if you smell them, they actually they smell like flowers. For example, the British, for some reason, love lavender in their food. Or、mm. rose,、Ugh. Americans、okay. not so much, especially in their baked goods. I've been watching a British baking show.、Uh, notes here are not musical notes, guys.、Uh, this word "note" is used to describe the scent of either、um, some sort of cooking ingredient or perfume. You know, we'll say, "Oh, that perfume has a musky note," or "That perfume has a flowery note," or a floral note, just like they're using to describe the saffron and that buttery flavor. So the smell, the aroma of that saffron goes really well with the buttery flavor of the rice. Yum. Yep, you've got notes, you've got tones, a sort of special flavor of those、mm. sort of things, and all those things together are a perfect match.、Mm. Oh my goodness, my mouth is watering. So much that I can't go on anymore. <laughs> We've got to take a break right now. So let's do that. Here comes our Chinese teacher. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. Today we're going to continue to look at the sixth unit. Okay, we're going to talk about a famous blogger, Molly, and his program. Now, this program is about food. It's about local food, but it's really delicious. We're going to look at the sixth unit in another episode. 嗯，他做了什么好菜？请朋友们共享。好，哎，这一集里头，原来呢，他请朋友来要做一些主菜。嗯，他做的是大黄牛小排。哎，那这个菜他可说是要竭尽所能的，要让他的朋友们留下深刻的印象。看看这个片语 ，pull out all the stops。哎，这个片语是表示。竭尽所能，你是尽全力要让宾客、宾主尽欢。好，那我们再来看看，下面就说到他做的这个牛小排呢，是很有层次的，味道很丰富的。所以他提到 ，That's bursting with flavor。那另外，它充满了风味。那这个菜到底容易还是困难呢？在这边说起来，其实连新手厨师。都会做。什么叫新手厨师？这里用到一个字 ，novice，novice novice cook。换句话说，你手
度从事一个工作，那就是一个新手。再来，我们看下面这一段，下面就说到了 Molly 呢，他怎么做菜？他做这个牛小排，其实还搭了他另外一道的拿手菜。我们来看到这个动词 pair， pair。A would B， 那就是把两个搭在一起。他提到牛小排，那跟这个牛小排搭的拿手菜是什么呢？好，后面就说到了是 saffron rice。saffron 对我们来说可能比较不熟悉，但是在西式料理里面，这个 saffron 就是番红花。那它的颜色当然是红的，所以说用这一道菜做这个饭的时候，哎，可是要比较注意了。他后面就说，他怎么样让这两者搭起来成为完美的搭配。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
cracker crust on the bottom if it has a crust at all. But in this case, it's a nut crust, which sounds delicious. And it's been prepared superbly here. It's light, fluffy, and not too sweet. Fluffy, of course, like the fur of a bunny rabbit、mm. or of a pussy cat. And the secret to this dish is roasting the pistachios first, as this brings out the nuts' flavor. So you've got to roast them first. Of course, roasting is、uh, cooking something with high heat、uh, in an oven or something like that. Now, after a few hours in the kitchen, Molly is pleased with the results. So she's been in the kitchen for a little while, and she's happy. Hmm, I've done a good job. I think my guests will enjoy my meal. Totally. So shortly afterward, or not long afterwards, her friends arrive and are blown away by Molly's meal. Blow away. Okay, that can mean a couple of things.、Uh, maybe like what has happened to me sometimes if I hang my laundry out on a windy day,、uh -huh. my shirts will get blown away by the wind. <laughs> so you got to watch out for that. Or you could be blown away if,、uh, say, somebody attacks you in an army attack.、Uh, we could blow all those people away.、Uh, they're Kill so spaced, them. They're so, they're so spaced out they wouldn't even notice it.、Mm. But in this particular case, though, you're just overwhelmed. You're so surprised. You just don't know how. To react, wow, that is so good. We are speechless. We just don't know what to say. Yeah, so you can actually separate this、uh, verb phrase. You could say "blow someone away." Molly blew her friends away with her meal or by her meal. But yeah, it's slang. It just means to be really impressed with something.、Uh, it's nice to blow people away by things you can do.、Uh, maybe they weren't expecting it to be so delicious. Who knows? The ribs are a big hit with everyone, so everyone loves those. Ribs. We use that phrase a lot. Oh, yeah, it was a big hit at the party. You know, I just took a new chocolate cake to a party I was going to, and everyone loved it. They were blown away. It was a big hit at the party. They're as sweet as candy. These ribs. Remember, she's got a rub on it.、Um, so it. Sounds like she was able to turn that rhubarb short ribs into something sweet. So sweet as candy, and the meat is so tender that it slides off the bone. If you're successful with barbecuing meat, that's the goal. You want that meat to be just you know you can use a fork and just pull it away from the bone, and it's really tender. The opposite, of course, is tough. Yeah. T o u g h tough. Oh, this steak is so tough. I can't eat it. It's overdone. But of Of course,、uh, your goal, as Stephanie said, is to have the meat be tender、mm. and soft and juicy. In this case, it's so tender that it slides right off the bone. And of course, the sensation of eating is、uh, important too, just as important as the actual taste. And as they're enjoying the meal, the women notice someone sneaking around the house. Uh, it's Molly's husband Nick,、mm -hmm. hoping that they will offer him some food. So I guess her husband Nick, who is also a musician, I believe,、uh, is not really involved in the cooking process. So he's kind of、uh, sneaking around the house, lurking around, doing other things. He's not involved in the cooking, but he <laughs> certainly wants to have that food when it's done being cooked. He hopes they will offer him something. Well, it sounds like she only invited her girlfriends over, so、mm. her husband. Can smell this delicious food, and he, even though he's not part of their little、uh, dinner party, he's trying to get some food for himself. So he's hoping that Molly will, or the other women, will offer him some food, even though he's not officially part of their dinner party. To find out if he joins them for this delicious meal, maybe they let him sit down at the table and eat.、Uh, you're going to have to watch Girl Meets Farm season two, and it's currently on. We're in July, and it's on. On、this July on TLC. Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to wrap it up. 好，我们继续来看。哎，我们的大厨呢，要做这一道 saffron rice 番红花饭，怎么做呢？好，这里就详细的介绍。有一点比较特别的是，他提到这个番红花，嗯，他用多少的量呢？他说到用了。An eighth of a teaspoon. 我们知道，在英文里面，如果谈数学的话，分数的写法，这个是要学起来的。分数当然比较简单的 ，half 就是二分之一。可是如果说你的分数呢，这个分母的部分不是二分之一哦，是八分之一的话，怎么讲？我们要知道。
分母跟分子要分开来看，我们会把分子的地方是用奇数，也就是 one two three four。可是呢。分母的位置上，哎，像这边八分之一，这个八呢就要用序数的念法说法，也就是 eighth。所以当你讲 an eighth， 那就是英文说起来就是八分之一。好，记得这比较特别。接下来我们再来看，他说到用这么一点八分之一茶匙的番红花，那为什么？因为他说啊，这个味道很浓烈，而他不希望这个味道。压过别的食材，用了这个动词 overpower. Overpower something. 压过，盖过。好，那他还提到 Molly。当然，我们知道大厨呢，往往用材料都是很特别的。他希望用最好的。嗯，对他的美，对美食来说，美食专家的来说，这些都很挑剔。其中提到的奶油是 clarified butter， 这就是无水奶油。好。当然，他说了这些之后，这是他的呃番红花饭。那不要忘了，一个餐点里面除了主菜、除了副食搭配之外，还有那就是甜点。他的甜点呢是 cheesecake， 而这个起司蛋糕呢，他用的那个皮啊是 pistachio。pistachio 就是所谓的开心果，他用开心果来做底，来做他的皮，然后呢。做成起司蛋糕。好喽，我们再来看最后这边要说到，嗯，他在厨房里做了好几个小时，果然非常令人满意。接下来后面说到 ，shortly afterward， shortly afterward 就是 soon after， 也就是很快的不久，他的朋友就来了。果然大家。都非常喜欢 Molly 他所准备的食物。好，那他提到其中，他修饰说：“哎呀，他那个呃肉是多么的嫩，嫩到可以直接从骨头上滑落下来，看到吗 ？Slice of the bone。”好，还有他还说到，嗯，在享用美食的时候呢，发现有一个人在旁边 sneaking around the house。注意到这里一个动词 notice. Notice someone sneaking around the house. 其实 notice 是一个感官动词，所以我们知道，不管看到、听到、感觉到、注意到 ，notice 后面加受词，受词后面加补语，而这个补语，哎，已在这边修饰他的先生在旁边，哎，鬼鬼祟祟走进来，这就是 ing 用到 ing sneaking。好，我们今天的讲解就到这边结束。我们下次见。Okay, everybody, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and yeah, check out this TV show, and、uh, it will probably help your English listening comprehension ability, and you might even come up with some recipes for、mm. some food, and it will be quite tasty, fun, and it will help. Uh, invigorate your life. Okay,、yeah. that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for joining us from all of us here at English Digest. I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie.、Goodbye. Bye.